general features of Indian Railways. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the organizational setup of Indian Railways. Explain the classification of railway lines in India. Explain the important features of Indian Railways. When we were young and in school, we always look forward for our summer vacations. When schools closed for a month, it was the time for us to visit our grandparents, aunts, uncles and cousins. The long train journey is always a unique experience. As the train crosses through the lush green hills, colourful cities and the quaint countryside, we stick our faces against the windows filling the wind. Not only for kids, the chugging sound of the train and the soothing vibrations take every train traveller's imagination to a different space. Train rides are smoother than buses and are comfortable. We can sit back, read a book, enjoy the view or gossip with fellow passengers. Indian Railways had a modest beginning in the year 1853. Today, Indian Railways operate 12,000 passenger trains every day, carrying 25 million passengers every day. In this module, we will learn about the Great Indian Railways, the world's second largest railway network, which encompasses lots of features that make it ideal from the rest of the railway networks. The Great Indian Railway has become a part of every person's day-to-day -day life. It also plays a crucial role in accelerating the country's economic growth. Since Railways is a massive organization, the construction and operations are regulated by Indian Railway Act of 1889, which is amended from time to time. Simply, the laws and funds can't keep the trains on wheels. There is a huge group of different classes of responsible and dedicated employees working round the clock who make the railways as what we see today. So, who owns the railways? The executive authority of the railways rests with the central government. The central government is assisted by the railway board. Railway board. The railway board works under the overall supervision of the Ministry for Railways. The works include the regulation of construction, maintenance and operation of the railways. The railway board consists of a chairman, a financial commissioner for railways and five other functional members. They are the ex-officio secretaries to the Government of India. The members of the Railway Board are in charge of staff, civil engineering, traffic, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. The Railway Board is assisted by a number of technical officers and additional members who are in charge of technical functions such as stores, traffic, transportation, commercial and planning. All policy and other important matters are put up to the minister through the chairman or other board members as per the Indian Railway Act. The Financial Commissioner for Railways is vested with the full powers to sanction railway expenditure. New railway line projects and fundings are announced by the government in the budget annually. In addition to providing services to public, Indian Railways also does production, technical, and consultant works. Research Design and Standards Organization, that is RDSO. RDSO acts as a technical advisor and consultant with respect to the designs and standardization of railway equipment to the railway board and production units. Central Organization for Modernization of Workshops. It is a specialized agency to implement the various workshop modernization programs of Indian Railways. Production Units Apart from zonal railways, there are six production units which are responsible for the manufacture of locomotives, wheels, rail coaches and axles. For effective management, Indian Railway is split up into many zones and divisions as described below. Zonal Railways Indian Railway is divided into 17 zones, which take care of railway business, management and planning of all works in their respective areas. Railway Divisions 
Each zonal railway is divided into three to six divisions. There are about 67 divisions of Indian Railways works under the overall control of a divisional railway manager. Railway lines in India are classified based on the importance of the route, the traffic carried and the maximum permissible speed on the route. The major classification of railway line are meter gauge routes and broad gauge routes. The gauge is the spacing of rails on a railway track. The meter gauge is a railway track of 1 meter width. The meter gauge is further classified as Q, R and S routes. Q routes are routes with a maximum permissible speed of more than 75 km per hour and the traffic density is generally more than 2.5 gross million tons. R routes are routes with a speed potential of 75 km per hour and a traffic density of more than 1.5 gross million tons. R routes are further classified depending upon the volume of traffic. R1 route have traffic density more than 5 GMT. R2 route have traffic density between 2.5 and 5 GMT. And R3 route have traffic density between 1.5 and 2.5 GMT. S routes have a speed potential of less than 75 km per hour and a traffic density of less than 1.5 GMT. S routes are further subclassified as S1, S2 and S3. S1 routes are used for the through movement of freight traffic. S3 routes are uneconomical branch lines and S2 routes are those which are neither S1 nor S3 routes. Broad gauge routes. These are railway tracks with a gauge distance of 1.676 meter. The broad gauge routes are further classified as follows Group A lines, Group B lines, Group C lines, Group D lines, and Group E lines. Group A lines are meant for a sanctioned speed of 160 km per hour. Group B lines are meant for a sanctioned speed of 130 km per hour. Group C lines are meant for suburban sections of Mumbai, Kolkata and Delhi. Group D lines are meant for sections where the maximum sanctioned speed is 100 km per hour. Group E lines are meant for other sections and branch lines. Under unitary management, Indian Railway is the second largest state-owned railway system in the world after Russian Railways. There are many features that the Indian Railway possess and are described here. All the vehicles that are moving on a railway track are referred as a rolling stock. It includes locomotives, passenger coaches and goods wagons. A locomotive or engine is a rail transport vehicle that provides the motive power for a train. These locomotives can't pull on their own. We need a force to pull the trains. Traction is the force used to generate a pull for the rail engine. In the early times, the locomotives used to run on steam. Due to technological advancements, trains now use electricity and diesel to produce traction. Let's see the unique features which make the Indian railways on wheels. Track or a permanent way is the single costliest asset of railways. Indian Railways comprises a track length of 92,081 km. Electric traction is the most capital intensive and therefore Indian Railways traction policy envisages the extension of the electrification of high density roads and dieselization of the remaining services. Currently, Indian Railway has electrified 28,000 km of tracks carrying around two-thirds of total freight traffic and 50% of total passenger traffic. In order to increase the electrification of tracks, government proposed some futuristic plans as displayed in the table which engages public sector units like RITES, IRCON, etc. This will reduce the annual fuel bill by Rs. 10,000 crores. In this 21st century, 
Indian Railways is a self-reliant and technically established organization with half a million of skilled and trained personals. Summary Let us recap what we have learned. Indian Railways plays an important role in connecting people and accelerating the growth of the country. The power for regulation, construction and operation of railways are under central government. Due to technological advancements, Indian trains now uses electrical and diesel locomotives.